Welcome back, everybody. Time for some more Grand Tactician, the Civil War, and we are ready to continue this Confederate campaign. If you haven't seen what's happened up to this point, the link in the description will take you all the way back to Episode 1. You can get yourself caught up. We do have one new patron unit to add today. I want to give a shout-out to Woodpig and say thank you for joining uh, as a supporter of the channel. And we are going to give him, he's got the Irish Dragoons, and uh, they're going to be a part of Lee's uh, Cavalry Division here in Longstreet's Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, they're from Maryland. They have the Sharps Rifles. And uh, one of the things that I need to make sure that I'm doing is uh, making sure that I'm updating the weapons, at least on the artillery. We've noticed several times now as we've gotten into combat that a lot of our artillery pieces are still using those six-pounder field guns. And that is just not going to cut it if I want to have effective artillery on the battlefield. So uh, we're, for the most part, doing 12-pounder Napoleons and 3-inch Ordnance Rifles. Uh, they seem to be the most readily available, and the Napoleons have a nice bonus uh, for standardization because we have so many of them and we're producing those ourselves. Uh, so, yeah, here again, MSG artillery, same deal. Uh, let's get them switched over. You see standardization number of three. We don't have standardization on the three-inch three, three inch ordinance yet, but eventually I'd like to be able to get that. Of course, all of this hurts my economy upgrading a lot of units at once but that's just kind of the way it goes okay so i've got all my major field armies artillery upgraded i also checked all the cavalry to make sure that they weren't still using shotguns the only unit that was was nathan bedford forrest's cavalry uh, so we're gonna have a bunch of combat happening here and it's gonna start right here uh, with the Army of Mississippi taking on Morgan's command, that's going to be a pretty one-sided affair when it does take place. In fact, I think Morgan just realized what he was up against and thought better of it. I think that's what this is telling me here. Yeah. So he he saw what he was up against, and he is pulling back. But he's got the Army of the Ohio somewhere up here. As I mentioned before, if you're not familiar with how the interface works, the question mark means I don't really know for sure that's where that army is. I know they're just somewhere in that area. But we're going to go ahead and press up with the Army of Mississippi. Let's go ahead and make a move back into Kentucky. But do so with all of our corps this time. Army of the West in contact with the Army of the Mississippi. So we had a feeling that one was coming. I've got 24,000 men against his 19, 20,000. Works for me. All right, let's take on John Pope. All right, looks like we're fighting on the Bull Run Battlefield. By the way, if I didn't mention this earlier, we are about a day away from a new patch for this game. Uh, so this episode will be the last with the current version of the game. They'll be upgrading some more things. I'll uh, put a link in the description that will take you to the patch information. But you can always find it uh, in the discussion boards on Steam. They always update with what the next patch is going to include. So it looks like they're over here um, near McLean. Right there. By the way, a little historical tidbit. Uh, this is the home of Wilmer McLean, uh, who, after the battles uh, at Bull Run, decided to move to a quieter part of Virginia at Appomattox Courthouse to get away from the war. After uh, the battles of Bull Run were fought on his property, he moves there, and it ended up being in his parlor that Grant and Lee signed the documents of surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia. So he couldn't, in fact, get away from the war. Uh, imagine the coincidence that the first major battle of the war is fought partially on his property and the war in the East ends in his house. So interesting. All right. So we've got a lot of cavalry in this particular army, uh, which gives me a little more mobility. Uh, so we're going to try to find a good spot to build a battle line. If he's already across... Down here, I'm going to guess that, that maybe up around here somewhere is a place to build my defense, like up on this hill here. So I think that's what we'll go for. Okay, I finally spotted him just as I gave McIntosh orders to cross over at Island Ford. I don't think we're going to be able to get the orders to him in time to tell him to stop. There is a way to switch up how he handles situations like this. I think you can... Um, there's somewhere you can tell him to avoid. I don't know if I can do it right now, though. Service scouts, yeah. Um, that would just detach a group from them, but I don't think the other orders are available to me right now. So he's going to 
run smack into the middle of the Union forces. And you can see they're all right there. All right, Macintosh, we need to get you out of there. So let's somehow get some orders to him telling him to withdraw. In the meantime, I want to make sure that the rest of my men don't do what happened to my last battle. Or one of my last battles where they all shifted face to meet the enemy where they were. Rather than staying in the positions that I had given them. Uh, so what I want to do here is I just want to give an order at the army level. Army of the West and say no. No initiative in this case. So everybody stay right where they are. All right, so here he comes. At first, he was kind of hanging out over here, but now it looks like he's decided to go ahead and make a move. I just don't know if he's going to be willing to attack me all the way or if he's just going to try to take objectives and force me to attack him. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring Randolph's division around. What I might do is try to swing them around and hit him on this side. Looks like he may try to get around my flank. I'm going to start moving my artillery. So here's McIntosh's brigade. They did break initially, but they came back to my lines okay. I've got to get them reattached to their parent unit, which is actually that cavalry division. Evade. There's the evade button. I should have given that order before I sent him out on scout. There, now we'll have all four brigades back in that division. So I'm going to hold my infantry right here and my artillery. See if I can try to pull him into an attack here and then swing around with my cavalry over there. Let's go ahead and bring the other two infantry brigades back and put them on the line. Okay, so here's what the plan looks like. Uh, we've got a little bit of his forces that are isolated over here. We're going to try to take them on. We'll see what the rest of these guys do. If they don't engage, I may press this. And then if I have to, if I push through these guys and hit into his right flank over here, then I may advance with the rest of my the bulk of my force. We're getting late in the day, though. It's 520 now. So most of that day of the battle was spent doing the maneuvering and not really in any kind of action. I'm going to get all these. These are all uh, dismounted cavalry at the moment. Most of them are engaged, but not all. Let's get McIntosh moved up a little bit. Oh, they were dismounted. They're mounted now. This is the Missouri Bushwhackers here. Shelby Iron Brigade and Pike's Indian Brigade. We're going to inch up just to get ourselves in range. So Kelly, uh, Missouri Bushwhackers, they have Sharps rifles, as does the Shelby Iron Brigade and Pike. I'm going to get up here and see if I can engage these men here. So these are going to have, what, 9, 10 rounds a minute, but they're going to run out of ammunition fast. The good news is we're going to hit the end of the day probably before they run out of ammunition, so we'll be able to resupply back up and make sure we're looking to see what the rest of his army is doing. Yeah, they are coming. Okay. So if they're going to start shifting to engage, that means I need to push forward with my infantry here. So let's push Price, or that's McCulloch there, Price forward here. And then we'll have to get our artillery up as well. It's difficult ground to be advancing over, but it'll have to do. We can't let these guys take the brunt of his attack. 
a little bit difficult because I'm down the slope of a hill, so I can't get a good view of what's happening here. But let's move everybody forward. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Shelby over here. Put Kelly up next to him. On this side. so far. He's only lost one man, Pike has. Down to 53 rounds already. Missouri Bushwhackers have lost 90. End of the day. Okay, so we'll get resupplied. And we'll be ready to continue that fight after that. So because we're at the end of the day, we got to redeploy. So um, I can solidify my battle line over here now. What's Haskell's detachment doing? Let's get them reattached. I thought I attached all my skirmishers. skirmishers at this point. Alright, let's get Price moved up as best we can. We got He's going to have to straddle the creek, which is not ideal. So now right here we've got the Oregon Volunteers, Fayetteville Light Infantry, if anybody's got a perk available to them, not yet. We gotta move into these woods. McCullough's division has, let's see, Slack's Brigade, Missouri Black Guard, and the King's Own Regiment. They've seen combat before. The King's Own's gonna be in a tough spot right there, though. Let's make sure my artillery's firing. They are. No, they're not. I need to get them in a spot where we've got a decent line of sight. I just have to keep an eye on them. Rounds that are left for my my cavalry because they're gonna run out of ammunition quick. Number should be good though, because I'm getting so much fire on him with that cavalry. Let's take a look. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, he had a lot of wounded he brought into this battle, so that's a little misleading. The numbers are about two to one. But he's holding most of his main battle line back. I'm just mainly dealing with skirmishers. bit of an issue here. These skirmishers won't reattach to the parent unit. I'm not sure why. I've 
I've got to get my artillery a place where they can fire. One of the things you'll be able to do in the new patch is you'll be able to manually move your units. Like for me, putting the army commander all the way over here doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, so I would move him more to the center. So let's bring the King's Own Regiment over here so we can get on the flank of this cavalry. Missouri Black Guards holding their own right now. I think we're just going to pretty much sit tight where we are. I'm not sure why he isn't engaging with more than his skirmishers. Where's Haskell going? Hey, Oregon volunteers, why don't you sit tight, please? Face that way. Thank you. He's falling back, and I'm not sure why. Let's see what the issue is here. Falling back under fire. Yeah, I know you are, but stop it. What if we give an order to charge into that skirmisher unit? Let's see if he'll do it. Oh, it looks like he will. You want to fall back? I order you to charge, sir. To be obeying the order. Bit of a slow pro process. Uh, looks like they're running. Hit them, boys. Let's not get too far out in front of ourselves now. Well, now we have a feud between him and his commander. Is it because of the charge order? All right, you can fall back, man. I think I created a feud for him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's falling back over here? The Missouri Bush Bushwhackers. They're confident. There's no reason for them to be falling back. I don't know what they're doing. Get back where you are. Uh, now the Oregon Volunteers are going to be in trouble. Get back over here, please. Not because of their, their low. No, they got 36 rounds of ammo. Now, where are these guys going? Hey, Shelby, what are you people doing? I thought I gave orders to everyone not to take initiative. Man, I have no idea why my commanders are not obeying. Once I get that line sorted out, I'm going to advance with my infantry. Okay, let's move Sterling Price forward. We'll have McCulloch supporting him. I think we'll send McCulloch right up in here. If I can find a spot where I can give that order without having to give an order for firing on somebody. There we go. I'm going to move all of our infantry forward. Reform Randolph's division up a little further this way. Where's Haskell going? The Oregon Volunteers skirmishers that absolutely refuse to reattach are still fighting it out, even though their parent unit is not. up, see if we can get this order to 
be followed. For some reason, we've got one brigade, the King's Own Regiment, that's not moving with the rest of his division. So we might have to give him separate orders. Yeah, it's just been all skirmishers for him so far. Oregon volunteers are coming back up with the division orders. Yeah, it's been quite a battle. A lot of firing, considering I haven't even engaged his main unit so far. Uh, but, you know, the casualties aren't real crazy high, and that's probably why. About, he's probably got about 2,000 wounded from this battle. So still about 2 to 1. Let's wait for these guys to get into position completely. I'm move the Missouri Bushwhackers up a little bit. Move Pike up a little bit. Move Shelby up over here. I was about to try and take that battery, but he's pulling it back. Oh no, he's not pulling it back. That's his infantry that's breaking over there. All right, King's Own Regiment, here's your chance for glory. I want those guns. Take those guns. able to push up into these woods. Really, the, the right flank of his army hasn't been touched. He's kind of hanging out out there. We're still fighting the Michigan batteries. We'll go ahead and speed up time now. Come on, boys, take these batteries out. There we go. We got him. All right, let's see what's going on here. I think we're low on ammunition. Kelly's low on ammunition. That's here. I had a feeling that would probably happen. That's Missouri Bushwhackers down to just 17 rounds. But it looks like uh, we have a bunch of the enemy units that are withdrawing, mostly his artillery. Our MSG artillery exited the battlefield. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Let's see the situation now. He's down to just 15,000 men effective. All right. So he withdrew. You can see there are about 2,100 casualties for me. Uh, 8,500 is not really accurate for him. It was more like 4,000 because uh, he carried a lot of wounded into the fight. And they still don't really reflect that. They, they show the wounded number in there. So uh, the most important part of this, though, is that this may be the battle that drives the Union out of Missouri, which could lead to Missouri joining the Confeder Confederacy. All right, so that is the only Union force in the state of Missouri. So since we also have St. Louis, if we can get him to cross over into 
Illinois, which I don't know that I know for sure where he is. It looks like he's still there. We'll see where he pulls back. But if he pulls back to Cairo, uh, I think that'll be enough for Missouri to secede at that point. So the Army of the Ohio is here. We are moving toward him. Got to get the Third Corps moving. I think we're going to move the Third Corps back. toward Eastern Kentucky, since we already have the First and Second Corps over here. Meanwhile, I don't think much of anything happening in the East at the moment. We're just kind of holding the Army of the Potomac at bay, making sure he doesn't do anything. We've got the Army of Tennessee up here in Grafton. All right. I think this is, again, just, uh, yeah letting me know that people are withdrawing rather than facing us. Here's the front line uh, map filter as it exists, kind of showing you what the situation is with the front lines. Uh, I do want to, you know, because of all the naval activity that is happening and how huge the Union Navy is, I do want to keep a little bit of an eye on what's happening in New Orleans because historically it was basically... Uh, New Orleans is by far the largest city in the Confederacy uh, at this point, and basically the Union took New Orleans without even sending an army. They pretty much just did it with the Navy, so uh, we want to make sure that doesn't happen here. I do have a squadron with 26 ships, but only a total of 36 guns there. Uh, there's really not a lot they're going to be able to do, but he does have an army down here, the Army of the Gulf, uh, with 6,000 men. Uh, so right down here we have Fort Jackson, and this would be Fort St. Philip. Uh, which were kind of the, the forts that were downriver from New Orleans that were meant to help protect New Orleans. I don't have a lot of men there. I think I probably am going to have to form at least some small force to defend New Orleans. The problem is I'm completely out of recruits. Uh, so in order to be able to create an army down there, I, I did create one, or one uh, draftee regiment. Our brigade from Virginia, it's going to take a month for them to get there. We're building a new ironwork, so that's cool. Um, any further forces, though, are going to have to come by dissolving other units uh, because we just don't have any manpower left available to us. The Army of the Ohio has shifted over into Illinois. I think he really wants to make sure that I don't take St. Louis. We're waiting for the Army of the Mississippi to finish his retreat. He was pulling back to St. Louis, so I started sending my army up there as well. But basically, because the Army of the Ohio has shifted over, he's basically surrendered Kentucky to me. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and head up here, see if I can take Louisville. We might be able to get Louisville and Missouri, or uh, Kentucky and Missouri seceded here in this same episode. We're going to move, oh, Third Corps is already moving that way. We'll move the First Corps straight up here to Hartford. Let's see what happens. I expect the Army of the Ohio may try to engage my Army of the West. He's got around 19,000 men. I've still got 22. Okay, Army of the Mississippi is crossing out of Missouri. I think that ought to be enough to get them to secede. Let's see if it happens. It's still saying no, but it might just take a moment or two for that to register. I don't see all... Oh, we got the Army of the Southwest. They're still up here. Okay, they've reformed. They've got 9,000 men, so we're not done with this yet. We're going to have to drive Morgan's command out of Kentucky if we want to take Kentucky for the Confederacy. Ah, the Battle of Puebla, a Mexican victory, the ba Battle of Cinco de Mayo. So the French were thrown back by the Mexicans. Let's take a look here. British intervention is still at 40%. I don't know that there's anything else I can do for, for that right now. Where is his 26th army? Right there. Okay. 
we're still going to sit tight with everybody in Virginia. All right, there it is. We took Louisville, and with it, Kentucky has seceded. Now, the Confederacy historically claimed Kentucky anyway. Uh, a lot of these states had uh, pro-Confederacy kind of shadow governments, uh, even though the, the state technically stayed loyal to the Union. But we've got Kentucky. Uh, the second corps, is that Joe Johnston's corps? It is. He took Louisville, uh, so we're good there. Uh, I think we're going to kind of keep the third corps somewhat close. Maybe we'll go over here and we'll just kind of sit tight. Is this Lexington? No, I think Lexington's up here. Um, but we're going to sit close so that we're still able to reinforce if needed. I don't know where the Army of the Ohio is at this point. We've lost sight of him. But now we've got to deal with the Army of the Southwest if we want to be able to get Missouri to secede. All right, Morgan's Command in contact with the 1st Corps Army of Mississippi. Uh, I think Morgan's Command's fairly small. Yeah, it's about a 3 to 1 advantage. We'll auto resolve that. Don't expect to lose too many men there. I have started shifting that first core uh, over toward what's happening here because I can see what he's attempting to do. He's got the Army of the Mississippi, the Army of the Southwest, and the Army of the Ohio all converging on the Army of the West. Actually, the Army of the Mississippi looks like it's moving away, which is kind of interesting. But if he gets all of those men on one battlefield, we're looking at 20,000, 14,000, and 9,000. So we're looking at about 45,000 men up against an army with just half that. So that's why I'm trying to get First Corps Army of Mississippi, or Army of, uh, army of Tennessee over here to help. So they're in range to be able to support that. So take a look at this. Earl Van Dorn is not a favorite among his troops, apparently. Uh, the situation here, the soldiers are unhappy with their commanding officer, and many are deserting. That is something we can't stand to have happen. Uh, so what we're going to do about that is we're going to replace him. Uh, so let's go ahead and see who we have available to replace Earl Van Dorn as commander of the Army of the West. I don't know why they'd be unhappy with him. He's got great stats. He's very famous. Oh, his reputation of being a true womanizer... Is he the guy that got into the, who was, the, there was a Confederate officer who killed another officer over an affair. Yeah, that was Van Dorn. Van Dorn was murdered by a doctor who thought that Van Dorn was having an affair with his wife. Uh, he was shot dead. So I guess that's probably where that comes from. But man, I hate to replace an officer that's, that highly rated, but I also can't be losing men because we're short on men as it is. Samuel Cooper was one of the highest ranking officers in the Confederacy, um, but never really commanded troops in the field. But in this case, I'm going to put the old man out there and see what he can do. All right, let's see if that puts a stop to the issues that we had with desertion. I'd hate to see that it doesn't. The, the unhappy thing is still there, but we'll see if it disappears over time. Let's hope so. I think we're about to get into combat with the Army of the Ohio. He's coming across. All right, we're issuing forced march orders. Uh, it's not going to be fast enough, though, I think. Um, I don't think the First Corps is going to be there in time to be able to reinforce these guys. So we're going to be outnumbered here. All right, so this is another one of those situations where I have an opportunity uh, because he's only got 11,000 men on the field right now. That's the Army of the West, or his Army of the Southwest. Uh, but he's got reinforcements on the way. And what I want to do is I want to see uh, when those reinforcements are going to arrive. Three hours, so not a lot of time at all. In fact, I probably won't even be able to find him that soon. It'll take me three hours just to get into position. All right, so we're... Bring, we're uh, Building some breastworks, but I see my artillery firing, which means, holy cow, here he comes. Uh, so I barely had enough time to even get my men into position. Uh, he's coming straight at me. No fooling around this time. So looks like the place where I 
built my first breastworks is going to be kind of irrelevant because his attack is going to come elsewhere here at the stone bridge. We're just going to get into position right now and try to defend against this the best we can. So speaking of generals being shot during the war, uh, that incident with the doctor shooting Earl Van Dorn, uh, incidentally, the doctor was never uh, convicted of murder, and it seemed that most people felt that justice had been done in that situation. Similar situation uh, over, over something completely different, though, happened between uh, two Union generals. It was Jefferson C. Davis and William Bull Nelson. Looks like his reinforcements have arrived on the battlefield. I'll know one of his units withdrew. Interesting. Um, there was a, uh, it's a long story, but basically Jefferson C. Davis, who was a Union general uh, in the Western theater, felt that Nelson was undermining him, and, well, I shouldn't say undermining him, but was insulting him because Nelson was actually the senior officer. And, they kind of fought back and forth, and Nelson said he couldn't trust Davis, didn't think he was a good officer, tried to dismiss him from his command, but he got sent back. There was this whole kind of uh, argument thing that went on. Uh, they confronted each other when Jefferson Davis was brought back uh, to serve uh, in a hotel lobby, I think it was, and Nelson actually slapped Davis across the face with the back of his hand, and uh, Davis went and got a pistol, walked into Nelson's office, and shot him through the heart. I lived for about a half hour, but again, same situation. Uh, clear, clear act of, of murder in that case. Uh, but the union basically justified not bringing charges by saying you know, we need experienced officers, and uh, he was never charged with the murder. But Davis uh, never really advanced beyond his current rank in the army, either during the war or after the war, and he always believed it was because of what happened with Nelson, and it probably was. He's, he's going to wait for his reinforcements to arrive, but um, I, I can't sit here with the King's Own Regiment taking these casualties from this artillery, so I think I'm going to probably have to advance across because he's largely pulled the rest of his force out. So this is an opportunity, I think, to go ahead and let's see if we can get these guns. He left these two batteries to cover his withdrawal. So we're going to charge across the forward with the King's Own Regiment and Slack's Brigade take out this artillery. Alright, but otherwise I have no intention of attacking his army because I know I'm about to be outnumbered if I'm not already. Uh, they're Yeah, they're just about to arrive. So we're going to see that number go up. Actually, it has gone up. Oh, no, it hasn't yet. But it will very soon. And we're just going to sit tight at these crossings and let him come at me. After I take out these batteries. Alright, Slack's Brigade got thrown back. So it looks like the King's Own Regiment's going to have to do this on both accounts. So we drove off the one battery, now we're going to drive off the other. And it looks like they were able to do it. We're going to keep them here, engaging Osterhaus's detachment of skirmishers. At least as long as we don't see the enemy army coming back in force, which it looks like he may be starting to do. Alright, King Zone's going to construct breastworks here at this crossing because I'm basically going to have to hold it with just their brigade for now. And they've already lost 335 men. But we've got time to do this because the enemy's not making his way down yet. Let's make sure he's not trying to sneak around me somewhere. Alright, here he comes. And I think he's got to have gotten his reinforcements by now. Yep, he's now got 31,000 men. Okay, so here he comes, at least with his lead elements. I have no idea where the other army is. He may 
sneak up on me somewhere where I don't even expect him to be. And I really don't have the ability to spare the manpower to go scouting for him. So I've got all my dismounted cavalry here firing across the river. While it appears he's sending his infantry over this way. We've got the King's Own Regiment ready to cover that crossing from behind breastworks. Or the stone bridge here. I don't have that one behind breastworks yet. I did get Slack to rally, and we're going to send him out here to a relatively quiet area. Uh, but again, behind breastworks, once we get him finished. We, I don't think we ever actually constructed these ones. So we'll let them get on that. Okay, here he comes. It looks like he's ready to start advancing on me now. Guess it would help if I unpause. There we go. Now he's got significant high ground here, but I at least have the fortifications in my favor. I can't quite tell where it is he's going to try to cross, but I think it's going to be the stone bridge. So in this case, what we're probably going to want to do is bring Macintosh down and let's tell him don't use roads for this, but I want to bring him down. Uh, not like that. Let's do it this way. I'm going to bring him down and around and then have him come up on this side so we've got support. So whoever tries to attack across that bridge is going to be fired on from three sides. can't cross that creek there. I guess we can find out. I think he's just coming up to the edge to fire. Okay. Let's get him up here. I know he's got a lot more men than this. I just don't know where the reinforcements are. Oh, there they are. Oh, jeez. Okay. They came in from Centerville. He's behind me. Oh, boy. I am in a pickle here. All right, let me think about this for a minute. Okay, we're going to start by bringing three brigades up here, the ones that are behind fortifications in areas where we don't really need them right now. I started to issue orders for the cavalry to move that way, but I've changed my mind, so... That's why they switched their position. In Macintosh, I was moving over here to cover, but now you can see these guys are pulling back, so I might be able to go ahead and shift the majority of these forces this way to meet the new threat. hope he kind of sits tight and doesn't start advancing because if he starts moving these guys in before I get a chance to move to counter him I could be in trouble let's tell Randolph get him moving double time man there comes Slack he's going to come help out with that wow that's a lot of brigades back there all right, let's tell Slack to get in behind this fence. If he can, he may not get a chance. Oh, boy. We'll keep the artillery and these couple of brigades over here. Oh, now he's pulling back.
Don't use roads, just go straight, guys. Alright, Slack's gonna get in behind this fence, but it might be too little too late for me because he's he's got a lot of men over here. Now he's trying to shift. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking here. He's already been through a lot in this battle. Missouri Bushwhackers are upgraded. I'm trying to decide what will be the best use for them. She's Vanguard. Alright, I think I may have saved the army. Because he pulled back over there. Which was dumb, because he had me. He had me dead to rights, man. If he'd have pressed on both sides, I'd have been in trouble. I still may be. Because this is a big force that I'm facing over here. Still trying to get my line into position. He's pushing all kinds of skirmishers out. We're probably going to run out of daylight before we really get to advance this attack too much. Here it comes, and he's going to hit slack on his flank, unfortunately. about that. Who can we send over there? Pike's Indian Brigade. Fayetteville Light Infantry about to see a promotion to expert skirmishers too. Shelby Iron Brigade up. Now, Pike, I want you over here, dude. Oh, he's got to get around the fence. That's the problem. All right, you know what? Charge into these guys. Give them the cold steel. Ah, it's not going well. Making sure he's not coming back at me over here. Well, that worked. Pike broke those guys. And did so without too much in terms of casualties. And I think we're going to give him the cold steel perk. Because that worked out nicely for them. And now we're going to use it again on the 20th Brigade. Two brigades there, so I don't know how well this will go, but we'll see. Man, they're taking a lot of casualties, though. And now it looks like the Yankees are coming at me right here. Let's go ahead and slow down time a little bit. We're running out of daylight. Shelby Iron Brigade, well, obviously a name like that means Iron Discipline, no? Well, no, we can't do Iron Discipline, they're mounted unit. We'll give them mounted rifles, we'll let them stay on horseback while they fight. Alright, at the end of the day we've got a unit that withdrew. 
for the enemy, his artillery, and uh, Commander Pike of the Indian Brigade was wounded. Looks like a bunch of other units withdrew as well. So I don't know where that puts him in terms of manpower. Let's take a look and see. Okay, now we're pretty even. We're down to just 22,000 men on his side. That's a number we can work with. All right, we're on to the next day, and it looks like he's renewing his attack from this side, which is not necessarily good news for me right now. But we're going to have to push against Buell's army, I think. Let's push Randolph up. Get McCulloch's division moved up as well, next to them. It gives it to be five brigades pushing against those guys. Oh, MSG artillery has no guns. He must have taken them out down there. We've got artillery up here, but not much else. Really just two brigades to defend this side. If he starts shifting this way and goes after the artillery, I might be in trouble. I'm not entirely sure what Buell's up to here. I think I can probably send Stack this way. No, actually, let's send him over here. Pressing forward with these guys. Artillery seems to be doing their job here with these Napoleons. That's what these are, too. Yep. Oh boy. I think we got a little bit of far ahead of ourselves there, Shelby. Let's do this. Let's. I guess we're going to have to move the others up as well. Let's move the Missouri Bushwhackers and McIntosh's brigade up. send this infantry up. In fact, I'm going to give them an order to charge right in here if I can. All right, he's pulling back again over there. So really this is the battle at this point. Missouri Bushwhackers. Charge these guys. I should have done it from horseback. All right, that's it. That was a significant victory there. That was, that could have been ugly, but it actually worked out really well. So we're going to wrap it up right there, but we'll take a look and see uh, what the results of that battle were first. All right, due to his battle honors, Captain Good has become famous. It seems like the artillery commanders get an unusually high amount of those battle honors after these battles, but uh, that's good news there. Uh, we, we've taken Kentucky, and with this battle, I think we're probably going to secure Missouri uh, because we defeated both of the major armies that were in the area. So I think that's probably going to secure Missouri for the Confederacy as well. Uh, so now that we've added those two states, our only real issue is going to be manpower because we're basically completely tapped out on manpower. And he still got me by about 90,000 men. Uh, but his morale's down to 70. National support's down to 89. 
Uh, so I think that'll help. But we're probably going to have to pass some kind of a policy to get additional men unless we keep whipping them in battle. But we'll see. I'm going to wrap it up right there. Use, your, uh, use the comment section below to let me know your thoughts about all of that. And uh, by the time we fight the next episode, or play the next episode, we will have a new update. I'll put the link in the description to tell you all about it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.